In this AE tutorial, we're going to create a paintbrush transition. Hey, how's everyone doing today? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. We got a great tutorial today. I like this effect and it's very easy to do. So to start off, we have several brush images, which I can double click here. I went ahead and downloaded a Photoshop brush and converted all these to PNGs. To do this tutorial, you will need these brush stroke images and I will be providing a link to download the images and the project file in the description of this video. So be sure to download it or download a Photoshop brush or look for these paint brush sort of strokes, which are really nice because they have some nice, you know, uh, transparent areas in the middle of the brush and it'll make it look realistic and really cool. So let's go ahead and get started. Very easy tutorial. We already have a new comp in here. I have one image already in the uh, composition here. So, so once you have your image in here, go ahead and select it, go up to layer, pre-compose and call it placeholder one and move all attributes into new composition. And this way you can just swap out uh, your image a little bit later. So you're creating a non-destructive workflow. So you can easily just swap in a new image. So I suggest doing, and before we get in the paintbrush, you know, I want to create the Ken's burn effect real fast. So go ahead and hit S and keyboard for scale, add a keyframe for it and move forward in time by, you know, maybe several seconds, maybe go up to seven seconds and just scale this up just by a little bit. Just so now we have a little bit of a nice animation there and we're not doing this on a static image. So I think that's cool. And now let's go ahead and start bringing in some brushes. So let's go ahead and bring in brush one. And so this brush is on a transparent background. So that works great. And maybe just hit S on your keyboard for scale and we'll just scale this up just by a little bit so it goes across the entire composition. And what we do is go up to effect, transition, linear wipe. All right, and then let's add a keyframe for transition completion. Let's move this keyframe forward in time to probably about 18 frames or somewhere around that. And let's set the transition completion to 100%. And if you want, you can go ahead and change the wipe angle to a negative 90 degrees. So it comes in from the left to the right and we can increase the feather to about 50 to 100, whatever suits your taste. And there you'll have this nice stroke coming in. And now we gotta add several more uh, strokes in here to make this complete. So what we can do is go back to our project window and bring in a few more uh, strokes in here. So maybe we'll throw in three PNG and maybe this time we'll hit R on our keyboard for rotation and we'll do like a, a nice 40, like 35 degree angle uh, and make this go all the way across like this. Maybe we'll reveal her eyes or something like that. I don't know, hit S ring keyboard for scale and bring this up. And of course, go back to your original PNG one, grab the linear wipe with the keyframes, copy it and go to like the last keyframe here and paste the effect on to your new splatter image. And of course, you know, go ahead and fix the feather. And if you want, you can always change the angle wipe to 90 or negative 90, depending on what you want to do. So now that we have the idea how to do this, we want to fill up our entire screen here with splatter images. So go ahead and make sure to apply all these splatter images, scale them up and apply the linear wipe transition individually. And of course, make sure to offset the keyframes so it's not gonna all happen at once. Okay, so I'm back and I offsetted the keyframes by a little bit, uh, just kind of time this out a little bit better. And of course, remember timing is everything. So make sure to perfect on your actual timing of the animation and keyframes. Um, I think linear keyframes for this is just fine for me. So you can, of course, select all these keyframes and hit F9 on your keyboard to make them easy ease keyframes if you want to kind of have like a, a slow start and it kind of slows down at the end of the animation. For me, linear works for this in this case. But anyway, when you have all these images in here, what you want to do is select all four of these splatter brush images. I keep saying splatter. I don't know why, but go up to layer, pre-compose, and we can call this one, I don't know, paint stroke. I, I really don't know what to call it, but paint stroke one or something like that and click okay. And then what we're gonna do is go up to layer new solid. And we're gonna make sure it's black and we'll just call this one uh, matte and click okay. And we'll put it right underneath our paint stroke one and we'll toggle switches and modes until we see the track mat and toggle switches and modes are down here. And we'll go to the track mat for the mat and we'll set it to alpha inverted matte. And what's gonna happen is we see this black screen and then our paint strokes are going to uh, reveal our image as they animate in their composition and that's gonna look great. And then of course, once this animation is done as and once the last paint stroke is turned off, you'll see that with this texture or with this uh, brush that there's still gonna be areas that are not completely revealed. You're not gonna have perfection with this sort of texture, which I think is great. It looks realistic. So what I suggest doing to get rid of this, either you can keep it, I don't like that idea. So what we can do is go to the mat, hit T on your keyboard for opacity, add a keyframe for opacity, move forward in time by maybe a second so it's not gonna be abrupt 
and set it to 0%. And maybe we'll make these easy ease keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. So all that extra textures go away and it looks good. So let's talk about adding some colored brushes and then revealing on our next image just like this. So what you can do is you can create another composition and recreate this. Or if you're lazy like me, you'll just reuse the same exact thing. So let's go back into our paint stroke one. So let's go to our first PNG down here. Let's go to effect generate fill. And you can keep it red or we can change the color to whatever color that we want. We'll do maybe purple. And maybe just copy the fill, go to their next PNG, paste it in there, change the color to something else. Go to the fourth PNG, change it, go to something else. Maybe we'll do like orange or something. And then continue to do this for your last uh, brush image. And maybe we'll do like, maybe we'll do like blue or something. And that should be good. And we'll go back to our tutorial. And as you can see, we did change the colors to this comp, but it's still black because it's all on this black mat down here. And let's go forward in time to maybe like four or five seconds. Let's go back to our project window. And let's go ahead and bring in the paint stroke one composition and put it on top of everything. And move it forward in time to when the strokes start revealing on. And as you see, we have these brushes on top of our image. And it doesn't look so nice. It looks like we're just like painting on top of it. And what we can do is go to the blending mode and set it to maybe like soft light or overlay, whatever you think works best for your image. I think I like overlay in this case. So now we can start revealing on our next image. So I'm gonna grab another image and bring it into our composition and scale it into its place. And let's go ahead and turn this into another placeholder. So let's go up to layer, pre-compose, and we'll call it placeholder two. And this way we can easily change it out later. Maybe we just move this forward in time just so we know where everything's happening here. And of course we'll carefully rearrange our layers here so we can see the colored paint stroke and then our next image will come on. So now what we can do is create, say like another brush stroke image here. So like we'll have like four other images doing a different sort of design. So it's not gonna be completely all the same. So go ahead and design another one or use the same one or just download this project file so you don't have to do this. Uh, but we'll go back into our composition and once you have that new sort of paint stroke designed, go back into your projects over here and find that new composition and bring it into your timeline. And we'll kind of put this right on top of our image here. So the first thing we're gonna to do to reveal this image on is select placeholder two, go to the track mat and set it to alpha mat. And you'll see that our placeholder two will reveal on as our new set of brushes go ahead and paint on our image here. And of course we'll have all that rough textures. So for us to easily fix these extra textures coming through the brushes here that are not getting deleted, what you can do is go to placeholder two, go up to edit, duplicate, Go for, forward in time to where you want to see the full image on. So hit T on your keyboard for opacity, add keyframe for that, move that keyframe forward in time and bring the opacity down to 0%. And as you can see, the br extra you know brush strokes kind of fade away and it looks nice. And if you want to continue the Ken Burns effect for the placeholder two image, uh, don't apply it individually just because we have two placeholders here and things could offset. So what I suggest doing, go up to layer new null object uh, hit S on your keyboard for scale. Go to that five second mark here where your new placeholder comes in. Go to the end of that animation, like 10 seconds, and you know add another keyframe for scale. Go back to the original keyframe. Maybe we'll set this one up to like 112. So this one will be zooming in, and then our second image will be zooming out. And then you see that flows very nice. So, and if you were following along with this tutorial, this is what you should have gotten. And I think it's very artistic. I like it. I think it has a lot of great use. And if you're going to use this effect, please let me know down in the comment section below. I'd like to know what you guys are using this for. And be sure to link me to those videos as well if you're using it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you have not already for more videos just like this. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a good day.